this is you, Dave Dave. I thought that Adam was the son of the new author. But the Garden of Eden was set, and he's the son of the author. As a natural heir of the new author, he was the creator and the owner. Now, the Hebrew word, Ba-Rash, Ba-Rash-T, means to drive out from a possession. Especially to expatriate or to banish a person from his native country. To withdraw from residence in one's native country. Uh, to be exiled. We will take a closer look at cherubim since we are dealing with our holy feast and what all of this means in the connection. The Hebrew word is ter-ab, ter-ub, T-E-R-O-O-B. In Hebrew is uh, kuf, resh, wav, faint. And it is un of uncertain derivatives, but it's an imaginary figure. Ter-ub, or a cherubim, is an imaginary figure. Of course, we're dealing with cryptic language designed to keep the spiritually good in that condition of being spiritually good. Thus, any knowledge of the tree of life is the first thing that you see from the world. So that Cain, in his use of the tree of good and evil, would have three ways of 6,000 years, which is the time you may want to allow Cain to get to them, to see if they could rule in a good a satisfactory manner, allow Cain and his descendants uh, to rule and see if they could rule in a, a moral or proper manner, or if they could rule with propriety, to see if they could rule with justice, to see if they could rule with reason, to see if they could rule in a uh, favorable manner or equally, and not change what is so satisfactory and to see if they could turn, see if they could rule satisfactorily. If they could rule satisfactorily, then you and Wafi would allow them to rule forever. If not, you and Wafi, who gave them the authority to rule, will take it from them and give eternal rulership to the son, you and Wafi, but to defeat you and Wafi. This means the whole world is facing judgment day. The cherubim, or Ta'ud, Kuf, Resh, Wav, Fate, is a physical likeness or representation of a person. It's a mental representation, or it's an idea. The cherub, or Ta'ud, is a conception, it's a form, an appearance, or a semblance. Cherubim, or Ta'ud, Kuf, Resh, while faith is a symbol, something used for or regarded as representing something else. The material object often representing something immaterial. So cherubim is an order of angels to guard against man's unauthorized re-entry into paradise. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through emblems. They speak, understand, communicate a special and secret language through representation, insignia, regalia, and tokens. They speak, understand, and communicate a special and secret language through signs, badges, and totems. They also speak, understand, communicate a special secret language through characters, glyphs, and ideograms, ideographs. Uh, this special order of angels speak, understand, communicate a special secret language through hieroglyphics and hieroglyphs, higher uh, 
They also do it through figures and letters and phonograms. This order of angels, this special group of men, speak, understand, and communicate a special and secret language through trademarks, brands, and monograms, through stamps, initials, and ensigns, and logo types. Uh, this special order of angels, this unique special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through watch words. They speak, understand, communicate a special secret language through passwords. They speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through counter signs. This special order of angels, a unique group of men, uh, they speak, understand, and communicate a special and secret language through grips. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through shibboleth. Uh, they also uh, speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through earmarks. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand the commute of special and secret language through idiosyncrasy. This uh, unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through ciphers and codes. This unique order of angels are a special group of men, cherubim, who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through cryptograms. This uh, unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through arms and crests and coat of arms and escutions. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through flags, pennants, standards, and banners. This unique order of angels are also a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through uh, the crucifix and the cross. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through metaphors. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through similes and similitudes, as well as metonyms. This unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through allegory. They also uh, speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through epilogues. And finally, as you read the Bible, you will understand that this unique order of angels are a special group of men who speak and understand and communicate a special and secret language through parables. This is one of the methods used to hide the tree of life. I'll repeat that now. This is one of the methods used to hide the tree of life. From the heirs of Yudhei Wapay, these 5,996 years of rulership by the children of disobedience. Remember, this order of angels received an authoritative communication whereby they were commanded and directed to remain at the east. These are the men who travel east. They are the ones who are directed to remain at the east of heaven, the earth state at the time that Adam broke uh, the commandments of Yahweh and ate from the tree of good and evil, uh, which is called Garden of Eden. Some call it Shangri-La. Uh, they have a system of arrangement. This, this order of angels, the cherubim, this order of angels, they, they have uh, a system of arrangement. They have a classification and coordination of persons by sequence and rank. The cherubim, this special order of angels, they exhibit a state of efficiency. They 
exhibit a state of weakness. They exhibit a state of effective operation. This cherubim, the special order of angels, they exhibit a state of public peace. They exhibit a state of conformity to law. And they use a customary mode of procedure, conformity to parliamentary procedure. They exhibit a political system that is familiar to, certain, to a certain period in history. Uh, they exhibit a set of instructions according to which goods and services are furnished. They are a group or body of persons of professional occupation. They are a body or society of persons living by common consent under the same moral and social regulations. This order of angels, this cherubim, this special group of men are distinguished by degrees in their climbing of Jacob's ladder. And they are in a state of proper arrangement and preparation. And this cherubim, this special uh, order of angels, this special group of men, are a specific fraternal brotherhood. So, this revelation has a special effect upon us, and has a special effect upon your mind. This revelation gives us to know that the cherubim, as depicted in our Holy Bible, is a, descriptive, a description of something in speech and writing. That the cherubims are a representation of the deity. That the cherubims are used to picture or represent secret spiritual knowledge in the mind. We know now that the cherubim, this order of angels, are a representation of Yudhe Bethlehem Sophit Yudhe the son of Yudhe his saints and angels. We know that the cherubims are the representation of sacred subjects. The cherubims are to empower the son of Yudhe with the power of reproducing divine images stored in his divine memory by the suggestions of associated images and his divine ability to recombine former experiences to create new images. This cherubim aids the faculty of the son of Yudhe to produce ideal creation consistent with reality. The cherubim aids the ability of the son of Yudhe to meet and resolve difficulties and to be resourceful. Thus, the cherubim form a mental image in the mind of the son of Yudhe and brings spiritual ideas before the mind and relate ideas to one another in a divine pattern which enables one to comprehend through the intellect something not perceived through the senses, such as a cherub stands over the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant to bless, to praise, and to adore Yudhe Wafe, The cherubim also appear next to the throne of Yudhe Wafe, Bethlehem Sophie, Yudhe Wafe, worshiping and serving him. Now, also in that same scripture of, of Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, uh, is a reference to the flaming sword that is used. Now, this flaming sword is used to protect the tree of life. And it comes from the Hebrew word Kareb, K-A-T-H-R-E-B, in Hebrew spelled Kep, Resh, Bait, which causes a drought of the words of Yudhe Wabhe from the tree of life by the order of angels keeping secret the knowledge and power of the language of almighty Yudhe Wabhe from the sons and daughters of Almighty Yudhe Wafe, who are the heirs of this secret infinite power which will make them gods and goddesses of Yudhe Wafe. And these secrets are the seals of the Bible that are loosed by Yudhe Wafe, Bethlehem Sophie Yudhe Wafe, who comes in this all-powerful name Yudhe Wafe, which properly identifies Yudhe Wafe, Bethlehem Sophie Yudhe Wafe, as the Messiah the world has been waiting on and looked for 
by this special order of angels, this special group of men, at the end time. Now, this flaming sword, this order of angels, uh, also carries swords on uh, uh, as physical symbols. And those who are in the light understand exactly who that is. Kept where? Kept rest. Faith gives us great insight into the flaming sword as the mouth of men and the speeches they make to keep the tree of life hid. This knowledge only goes from mouth to ear or direct communication in secret. You ask and learn personally. It's the only way. Of course, Yuhe Wafe has the last word. I learn directly from Yuhe Wafe. That's obviously my only way. When the prophets spoke, they were only passing on what Yuhe Wafe said. Thus, man has been eating only from the tree of good and evil for 6,000 years, which has manifested an external character and disposition of bad. Thus, the placing of the flaming sword in the east to keep the way of the tree of life in a 360-degree pure circle, four square of protection. Now, this severe measure was taken to prevent alien elements of worldly culture and worldly worship from the enjoyment of heaven on the basis of their total corruption before you pay wafe. Since Eve and Adam were infected with the words and philosophies of the tree of good and evil. This constituted a mental and spiritual death to the knowledge and practice of morality, a mental and spiritual death to the knowledge of eternal life, uh, and the morality that you would receive from the tree of life. Thus, a curse of living hell for 6,000 years under the rule of Satan and his descendants. Therefore, the end of righteous rulership under Adam is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Their feet, Adam and Eve's feet, went down to death. Their steps took hold on hell. This flaming sword devours all the enemies of Yudhe who have ever attempted to get to and use the tree of life. The flaming sword has devoured and is satiated and made drunk with the blood of Yuthi Wahe's enemies for 6,000 years. Shall the flaming sword devour forever? No. At the coming of Yuthi Wahe, Bethlehem's defeat, Yuthi Wahe, is Judgment Day. Wherein the people of Earth is free to repent and return to Yuthe Wafe and eat of the tree of life forever, enjoying eternal life. That's what Judgment Day is about. As has clearly been shown, the wicked have been cut off from the tree of life for 6,000 years by a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the tree of life. So now we must take a good look at the penalty of disobeying the commandment of Yudhe Wafe not to eat of the tree of good and evil. Any corrupt people who attempted to come near the tree of life, their mind would be turned over. Anyone who attempted to come to the tree of life, their mind would be turned around, turned back. Any corrupt people who attempted to come near the tree of life, and they all are corrupt according to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, would be overturned, overthrown. Any people attempted to come near the tree of life would be converted to evil and changed. Any people who 
would come near the tree of life would be perverted. Any people who would attempt to come near the tree of life would be destroyed. Yudhiwabi poured out his anger upon the impenitent Sodom and Gomorrah, who loved the fruit of the tree of good and he just loved it. Loved it. Therefore, Yudhiwabi overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of those cities and that which grew up on the ground. And it came to pass when Yudhiwabi destroyed the cities of the plains that Yudhiwabi remembered Abraham the one to whom he made the promise, and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. The presence of Yudhiwabi, Bethlehem, Sophie, Yudhiwabi, is Judgment Day. And any country that rejects the Messiah, Yudhiwabi, Bethlehem, Sophie, Yudhiwabi, who is also the tree of life, that whole land shall be brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor buried nor any grass will grow therein just like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim which Yudhiwabe overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. The whole world is a witness that the so-called black man is totally destroyed as descendants of Adam, and to this very day, now, love to eat from the tree of good and evil. And therefore, they are separated unto evil, and are reaping all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law of Yudhe-Wafe. Even all nations say, why has Yudhe-Wafe done this unto the so-called black man? What meaneth the heat? of this great anger. These men say in answer because they have forsaken the covenant of Yudhe God of their fathers, which he, Yudhe made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. As you can clearly see today, the so-called black man is serving other gods and serving other religions, and worship them, gods and religions whom they know not, and whom Yudhe has not given unto them. And the anger of Yudhe is kindled against the so-called black man to bring upon him all the curses that are written in the Holy Bible. This is why Yudhe rooted the so-called black man out of his land in anger and in wrath and in great indignation and cast you into this strange land of America and the four corners of the earth as it is this day. The secret things belong to Yudhe Wafe, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of the law of Yudhe And America, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Europeans' excellency, who hold the tribe of Judah mentally and spiritually captive, forcing them to eat from the tree of good and evil, shall be as when Yudhe overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, the cherubim, the special order of angels, and the flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life, comes from the Hebrew word shama. To keep comes from the Hebrew word shama. S h a w m a r spell shin mim resh, and means to guard to keep safe, to preserve, to protect. It means to watch as a watchman. It means to put a hedge around something as with thorns, as was around Job in the book of Job. To keep 
means to retain, to keep the commandments of Yuhewate, to keep the Sabbath, to keep a promise, to regard or to be guarded, to take heed, to beware, and to reveal. Shema, Shin, Mim, Res, expresses the careful attention which must be paid to the obligation of a covenant or agreement, to the laws or to the statutes. Abraham gave orders to his children to keep the way of Yudhe The cherubim, the special order of angels, the special group of men, guarded against intruders in Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Almighty Yudhe Wafe warned Satan not to touch Yudhe Wafe Bethlehem's so feet, Yudhe Wafe's life, in the archetype Job, in Job chapter 2, verse 6. And Yudhe Wafe said unto Satan, Behold, Yudhe Wafe is in your hand, but save his life. Behold, Yudhe Wafe Bethlehem's so feet, Yudhe Wafe, comes in the volume of the book. The way uh, in that particular verse, uh, Genesis 3, 24, the way of the tree of life. That means to travel the road as trodden. The way of the tree of life means to follow that course of life. The way of the tree of life means to follow that mode of action. The way of the tree of life means to keep a holy conversation. The way of the tree of life means to travel eastward, to follow the high path. Now this information comes from the Hebrew word derek, which is dalit res kusofit. Oh, yeah, kusofit. Derek, D-E-H-R-E-K in English, which further means to follow this way of life and worship. It refers to the righteous actions and behavior of men. So now, we have a clear vision and revelation of how powerful and how holy our feasts are as we look at the feast of weeks. Now, we have a clear view of the reality that from our forefathers, Adam, the son of Yudhe until this day, we, the children of Yudhe have been banished and exiled from our native land and natural rulership of heaven for 5,996 years. And the basis of our heavenly rulership, the tree of life, has been hid from our view. And from the days of Adam until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it heaven by force of words, followed by violent acts. Lucifer, the serpent, used the force of words to beguile Eve and deceive Adam, the son of Yudhe out of his position and the rulership of heaven. Lucifer said, Yes, as Yudhe Wave said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for you Hewafe does know that in the day you eat from the tree of good and evil, those words of philosophy, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. What made Lucifer an old serpent was his secret plan to seize and hold power by force without legal right to seize heaven, to commit forcible or illegal seizure of the power of heaven, the earth, to use without authority or right. He's using the earth without authority or right. His plan was to employ wrongfully, to take possession of the earth through use. So you 
His whole scheme was to occupy the throne of heaven, which is the earth, through illegal seizure. Adam was clearly on the throne of heavenly rule, and Abel was obviously the heir to the throne of heavenly rule, having the favor of Yudhiwate. Therefore, Cain proved to be the son of Lucifer by committing the violent act of murder to take illegal possession of the throne of Abel, the throne that Abel was heir to. Now, this type of force of words expressed in Matthew comes, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, uh, comes from the Greek word harpazo. The Greek word harpazo, H-A-R-P-A-Z-O. And it means to strip, spoil, damage, hurt. Talking about these sorts of words are, are uh, means to injure, to impair, and to disable. Uh, this type of force expressed in Matthew 11, 12 also means to blemish, to tarnish one's character, to destroy, break, to demolish, to ruin, to wreck, to ruin one's character. To wreck, to vandalize, to upset the mind, to corrupt the character, to pervert people, to defile people, to debase them, to vitiate them, to soil them, and to smear them in their character, to make sad work of their work and their culture and their history, and to turn it around the opposite of what it is. To seize upon with force is to rob, and uh, it means uh, this kind of force all means, also means to steal secretly. Uh, this force, uh, spoken of in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, also means a cunning and secret thieving, the robbery of another's property, to take to oneself, as in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, as in John chapter 6, verse 15, also means uh, to steal another's culture and claim it to be your own, uh, to steal uh, another people's invention in your name instead of uh, publishing those inventions in their name, the name of their history, their culture, their God. Since our forefathers chose to disobey the commandments of our God, Yudhe Wafe, and chose to follow the words of Satan, then Yudhe Wafe gave us a divorce. In Hebrew, divorce is garash. G-A-W-R-A-S-H. In Hebrew, it is spelled Gimel Resh Sheen. That's in Hebrew, it is spelled Gimel Resh Sheen. Garash. Because Eve and Adam played the whore. That's why Yahweh divorced them. Because Eve and Adam played the whore with Lucifer, and we have continued to commit uh, adultery and play the whore with the gods of this world until this day. Now, this is Judgment Day. And you didn't want me, Beth Moon Sophie, you didn't want me, is here to forgive your sin and to reconcile, to cease your opposition to you didn't want me and his laws, to harmonize and settle your inconsistencies, uh, to restore your communion with your God, you didn't want me, through the revelatory knowledge of our holy our banishment, our exile, and our divorce for these 5,996 years have caused us nothing but diseases, sorrow, and pain. Our divorce from the knowledge and exile from the knowledge of the tree of life for these 5,996 years have caused us tears and suffering, violence, blindness, and ignorance. Our banishment and exile from the tree of life these 5,996 years have caused us nothing but poverty and affliction. Our banishment and exile from the tree of life these 5,996 years have caused nothing but death, hunger, unemployment, and suffering. Yudhe Wapi has made sure the whole world understands the terrible penalty of disobeying his laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments by a 
allowing you to eat the words of the tree of good and evil for these 6,000 years to the full. You, Tehwani, has protected and hid the tree of life from the view of man for 6,000 years. And you are a witness that the results are chaos. The results are nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, children against parents, wars and rumors of wars, murder, violence, hatred, greed and selfishness, drugs, sickness. The result is sexual diseases, murders, abortions of innocent babies, affliction and oppression. The results of eating from the tree of good and evil has been nothing but poverty, suffering, hunger, and pain, pollution of the water, the air, the food. The list goes on and on and on and on like the Energizer battery. On that commercial, on and on and on. Now is Judgment Day. The last opportunity to choose the tree of life and live forever in heaven under the theocratic rule of Yudhe Wave and his son, Yudhe Wave, Bethlehem Sophie, Yudhe Wave. I hope you've enjoyed uh, my notes on the Feast of Weeks, for this is the dynamic divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that is given to us through the study of our holy feast. They certainly constitute something other than eating food and drinking wine and making merry. I have made that emphatically clear. Uh, this Feast of Weeks, if it was not emphatically clear to you, uh, Feast of Passover, this is certainly clear. And I thank you, Dewa, for uh, blessing me to share this divine wisdom with you and the loosening of these seals relative to our high holy days and we understand why they are called high holy days. I bless you and I love you forever. Shalom alaikum.